What is up, TC fam, and welcome to the collective. My name is Josh, and I want to extend a very warm welcome to all of you, whether you're here offline or you're tuning in online. We love you guys so much, and I hope you're excited for today's service. Hey, if this is your first time joining us, whether you're offline or online, I want to extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for choosing to hang out with us here today. If you're at our offline campus, make sure you guys come find one of the people in these awesome yellow jackets and just tell them, hey, I'm new and I want to know more about our community because we want you guys to be a part of what's going on here at The Collective. There's so many events that happen. We also have connect groups that meet throughout the week that we want you to be a part of because here at TC, we do not believe that you are meant to walk this journey of faith alone. So make sure you guys get plugged in. And if you don't wanna go meet somebody, you guys can check out our website as well, thecollective.global. It has all the information you need to know about our community as well as that schedule for all our connect groups throughout the week. For all the parents of little ones, make sure you get your kids registered to join the Young Kids Church every Sunday here at our Ponok Inda and Pantai Inda Kapu campus. We've got a whole new registration system to make sure your kids are checked in and well taken care of. So make sure you guys get them plugged in every Sunday. Hey, for all of you youth that are watching this right now, the youth services are on hold until the 14th of January. Mark your calendars to make sure you join them on the 14th of January here at our Ponok Inda campus. But in the meantime, if you are a new youth and you haven't gotten plugged in, plugged in, make sure you send them a DM on their Instagram and say, hey, I'm new, I wanna to get to know more information, and I promise you someone will respond to you very, very shortly. Hey, throughout the week here at Citibank Ponok Inda, between Tuesdays and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., we have what's called TC Space. It's a free co-working space where you guys can come and hang out, do some work, grab some coffee. There's super fast internet here. So make sure you guys come and check out here, Citibank Level 8, Tuesdays to Saturdays, for a free co-working space here at TC Space. Everything that we do here in our community is due to your generosity. So if at any time during today's service you guys feel led to give, you can do so at one of our offline giving options out in the lobby or any of our online giving options posted on our website. Guys, I hope you're excited for today's service. I know I am. Let's start without further ado that countdown. Finding our identity in God's grace alone, we will see God's kingdom expand across the globe as we love people well and serve our spheres of influence. We will lead God's people to a flourishing life as we help them build healthy relationships and grow in awareness of how they can walk out all the unique gifts and talents they have in Christ. We will impact every city we are in by meeting everyone where they are with God's tangible love. With innovation and creativity, always pointing to Christ as the author of our faith story. We as the collective have the opportunity to come together in unity and love well. Because our God and Creator loves us well. We can be generous because He is generous with us. And we can dream big because our God is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. We as the church have been created and called for a purpose, and today we can embrace our place and fulfill that purpose. We are the collective, and we are united under one name and for one cause. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Well, good morning, TC fam. Happy New Year once again. I would like to invite you all to please stand up as we praise and worship this morning. Come on, put your hands together, church. We're going to start off this year with a declaration that He is faithful. Sing it out with me. I have strength in the struggle. I have truth in the trial I find peace in the battle I believe it, I believe it You're the light in the darkness You give grace in my weakness I have faith when it's hardest To believe it, I believe it You make a
Give it up for Jesus. Come on, that song was so good. Right? Uh, I, I, I love that song because it's kind of a declaration for this new year. Amen? That our God is the God who fights for our battles. That every knee should bow before the name of Jesus. And you know what I believe? I believe this song is a prophetic anthem for some of us this year. In fact, maybe this is a, pro, a prophetic anthem for your life. That, come on, we, we believe that. It, it, what the song says, every knee should bow before the name of Jesus. Oftentimes, we, we preach that just for people. Oh, we want our unsaved family to know Jesus, sure. But could depression bow before the name of Jesus? Amen. Would sickness and disease bow before the name of Jesus? Amen. Would anyone that's facing financial loss or family loss, would that, the, the feeling of grief and bitterness and anxiety and resentment, could that bow before the name of Jesus? Yes and amen. And I love that, that I believe this could be an audacious year for some people. This could be a bold year for some people. As you're, as you're singing this song, I feel like this could be a faith-filled year for some people because maybe some of you here might have had a hard 2022 and you're carrying that fear into 2023. But come on, this song was an example of declaration for your life. Amen. A, a year of, come on, our God is the God who's the Lion of Judah. He's the fighter. He's the one that's going to fight your battles. And so fear can bow down to the name of Jesus because you no longer have to bow down to fear. Amen? Come on, that's the declaration of our life and our, our declaration for you this morning, TC family. And so look, if, if you're coming into our doors for the first time, welcome uh, to the collective. We are a family community here. And uh, even if you've come here for the first time, you're automatically adopted. You kind of, you know what happens though? You kind of get the family drama that comes with the family, right? And, uh, but like knowing that, if you're here for the first time, I, I just want to walk you through a couple things. Number one, in the seat pocket in front of you, there is a prayer card or a praise report card. Look, if you're here and there's any kind of prayer that's going on in your life, whether you're praying for something in your family, something with your personal life, relationships, anything, I encourage you throughout this service, write out that, uh, write out any prayer requests you might have and drop it off in the black box on your way out. We have a designated prayer team that we pray for you, we pray alongside you, we contact you. And in, in just a little bit, we're gonna pray for uh, some of the prayer requests that people have been submitting uh, to us. But I encourage you, write out your prayer requests. We want to partner with you because we believe a family that prays together stays together. Amen. And uh, the second thing in the seat pocket, there is a giving envelope. And that giving envelope is just one of the ways that you can partner with the collective financially. Uh, you can either drop that off on your way out. You can also, on your way out, there's a QR code on the black box. Or you can go to the EDC machine outside. But 
everything that we do at TC is because of your generosity and how you get to partner with us as a church to keep building God's house. Um, and talking about building God's house, a really exciting thing is coming up. Uh, if we can get the next slide up. We have Vision Week coming up, end of the month, and it's going to be really exciting. Like if, uh, if, if you've been a part of our TC family, we have something called Vision Sunday, and we would do this every year. And what Vision Sunday is, it's a time where we can look back at what God's done in the last year of our church, but also get unified into what God could do in the next year of our church. And see, why vision is really important is because if vision doesn't lead your life, then life will lead you, right? But I don't believe God made life to lead you. I believe God made you to lead life. And so that's why God wants to give us vision. And so if you're someone that's here and you don't have vision for your life, I encourage you, come to Vision Week because I believe that if you get plugged into God's vision for the church, he's going to give you vision for your life. And, and what's unique is that we're not just doing a vision Sunday, we're doing a vision week. We're going to have a whole week packed out of incredible events, incredible opportunities. I feel like I heard someone say we're going to have a block party. That's really, we're so creative. I'm like, what is this church, a block party? Wow. Uh, so I'm telling you, come to uh, vision week the last Sunday of the month, January 29th, it's going to be really awesome, really fun. Bring your friends. It's going to be great. And uh, the last thing is this. Uh, last week was New Year's Day. So I'm kind of assuming half of you, you know, maybe parted a little bit too hard, did not come to church. It's okay. God forgives you on your first Sunday that you missed. Uh, but look, uh, we always celebrate the birthdays and anniversaries of every, uh, of every month. And so because we didn't do it last Sunday, we want to do it today. So if you're here and you have a birthday in, or an anniversary in the month of January, can you raise your hand? Anyone here have a birthday? I got one and I got two. Okay, awesome. Wow, a couple. Birthdays, anniversaries, month of January. Please raise your hand. I see some in the back. Amazing. Amazing. Hey, if you're around any people that are uh, having a birthday or anniversary in the month of January, if you could just gather around them or extend your hand to them or if you're not near them, uh, we just want to pray for these people because uh, we, we, if you're part of our family, we just want to, we want to pray for our family, amen. And so let's take a moment. We want to pray for birthdays, anniversaries, and also pray for some of the uh, prayer cards that people have submitted to us. And so let's pray. Jesus, we want to just lift up all of the birthdays that we get to celebrate in this month. God, what a beautiful thing birthdays are that we get to celebrate people. God, it's your heart to celebrate people. And so, Father, I pray that uh, in this year, people that are celebrating in the month of January, they would know that verse that says that you desire to give good gifts to your children. And so, Father, I pray that your heart would become so true and so full to people that are celebrating their birthday this year, that they would know in the deepest parts of who they are, where they find all of their, their satisfaction and who they are, the fullness of life would be found in you. And they'd have an incredible year this year. God, we also pray for just any of the anniversaries we get to celebrate in this month. Father, we pray that this month, uh, in, in, uh, in the couples that are celebrating, God, that there would be faster forgiveness and slower resentment. God, that there'd be quicker moments of honesty and authenticity and less moments of, of holding on to bitterness and hurt. That, God, life is too short to hold on to things that would disunify us. But, God, instead would there be more pressure to fight for unity and love and intimacy in relationships. So, God, we pray for that, for marriages, that there would be more reconciliation and more of an incredible future for marriages. And we pray for this. And God, as we close and get ready for worship, God, we also want to pray just for some of the prayer requests. God, we know that someone in our TC family has been just battling uh, breast cancer and has to get a uh, with some just some surgery and flying to Singapore. And so, God, we want to lift up this family member to you. God, we just declare that the blood of Jesus, which heals all sicknesses and all diseases, would go and cover the body of our family member, God, that you would bring any type of healing to the body, that, God, you would give wisdom to the doctors that have to perform surgeries. So, Father, we just pray that even in the time where people would falter in their faith, God, would you bring families closer together? Would your healing power come and bring peace and joy? And so, God, we just pray for hope to come and healing to come and 
every part of the, the person's life that's dealing with cancer right now in our family. So we pray for this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Well, TC family, let's uh, keep worshiping. Come on, TC. Let's come and enter his presence today with thanksgiving and praise for he is a good and holy and loving God. So we're going to sing this song with our hearts. All my words fall short I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do But every song must and you never do so I throw my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much but I've not been Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response, I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide.
are our Heavenly Father, and we really, truly are your children, your sons and your daughters. That you really are our God, and that we are your people, that you have called us and set us apart. that in the service, Lord, you will just have your way in everyone's heart and your spirit would just move across this room and give every one of us a true revelation of what that means, that you are our God and that we are your people, your church, called and set apart for your glory. Give us a fresh revelation this morning, God. Help us to settle for nothing less and give us the humility, Lord, to open our hearts and receive what you want to speak into our hearts today. New truths, new revelations and what that would mean for us individually and as a church. We love you, Lord. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, TC family. I love being able to say that, you know, TC family, because that's what we are right there, my dear friend Viola. We're family, you know, we don't just get together on Sundays, but we're not just a church and we're not just playing church. We do life together. And it's so exciting that we get to do that as a church. And today we're going to do things a little bit different. As you can see, we have the sofa set up. I'm going to have incredible four friends of mine come up as a panel. And we're going to talk about community and, and the importance of being connected in the church. But before that, I'm going to share a little bit of a word of God for all of us. And so let's get right into it. So Paul, the Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church in Ephesus, in Ephesians 1, verse 3, and we're gonna, not going to put up these verses, but Paul says to the church, when you and I first heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, and believed him, Put our faith in Jesus, who is the word and the truth. We're sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to live and dwell in us when we put our faith in Christ. And we were not just sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, but we were born and baptized into a whole new family, the family of God. That's who we are. Sometimes we have the wrong perception of what church is. If church is something where we go to on a Sunday. No, church is a family. And we're going to continue just reading and, and catching up with what Paul is saying in verse 15. We're going to read that together. And then we're going to... Uh, I'm going to summarize it a little bit. I'm going to want you to go home with four truths of what Paul is saying in this passage. Right? And one thing before we do that is very important. So as we have been given the Holy Spirit, promised Holy Spirit, and Paul talks about the church, there's one thing you have to understand. These two can never be separated. The church and the Holy Spirit are one. It's what sets us apart from the world. It's that we have been given the Holy Spirit, sealed with the Holy Spirit. So a church without the Holy Spirit can be a church. Those two are one. And the Holy Spirit has been given to us. And we're going to learn today what the Holy Spirit does for us and why he has been given to us as a church. So we're going to pick up in... In verse 15, and we're going to read from the message translation. And Paul says here to the church in Ephesus, and I, I know that this is what he wants to say to all of us today as well. That's why Paul says, when I heard of the solid, solid trust you have in the master Jesus 
and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I couldn't stop thanking God for you. Every time I prayed, I think of you and give thanks. This was a healthy church, yeah? But I do more than thank. I ask. I ask the God of our master, Jesus Christ. Paul was praying for the church in Ephesus. Paul prayed that the God of glory would make them intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally. What does that mean here? that we would grow in knowing God more and more in a personal and intimate way. And then he continues praying that your eyes would be focused and clear so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do. That we would understand what God is calling us as a church and individually to grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. God doing his work in and through us and his, through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit giving us endless energy and boundless strength. Powerful. Okay? All this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from the dead and set him on a throne in deep heaven in charge of running the universe, everything from galaxies to governments, no name and no power exempt from his rule, and not just for the time being, but forever. Jesus, forever and ever, the king on the throne, ruling everything. And also, he has been given to us as the head of the church, and we, are his body. And the four truths that I believe Paul wants to remind us of today, the first one is that the Holy Spirit has been given to us as a church so that he would grow us spiritually in all wisdom and insight to grow in knowing God more and more and more. That's the work of the Spirit in us every day, that our longing would be for God to know Him more and then to have more and more revelation of who He is. First truth. Second truth is that the Holy Spirit would shine into our hearts and give us clarity and focus of what Jesus is calling us to, and the hope of our calling. You know, we're all called. The third truth is that God has given the Holy Spirit to us as a church so that we would be empowered by the Holy Spirit to live out that calling. Because there's no way we can do what Jesus calls us to do in our own strength. No way. Church, Holy Spirit, all the time. And the fourth truth is that Jesus has been made the head over the church and we are his bodies in charge of everything. But that his heart for us is that in the way that we come together as a body and we love and serve one another is that through us, his church, he would make his presence known in the world. Those are the four truths. That's why we've been given the Holy Spirit. He's not just somebody who lives in there. And really our hope as a church is that we would all understand how important the role of the Holy Spirit is in the church because he's the one who's activating the kind of life that God calls us to. We're not called to live a comfortable life. We're called to build a kingdom. That's serious work. And every one of us has a calling to play a part in building that kingdom. Very powerful. But now I'm, I'm, I, before I call up the panel, I just uh, want to encourage us to understand that, you know, it, it is really in, in us keeping this coming together regularly as a church and staying or being connected within community as we grow together in our personal knowledge of God and intimacy with God. And it is in the serving and living out our calling where we are serving one another 
It is then that we are living that abundant and glorious life that God calls us to live. It's not about my comfort and me coming to church and getting entertained. If you're coming here this morning with that mindset, I pray God will transform and there'll be a shift in your mindset that you'll understand this is a hospital for the sick, a people where we, a place where we come to receive healing, to grow in a knowledge of our Savior and to grow in community together and understand what God's calling us as a church and what He's given to us in community. It's such a gift that we're family. So I'm going to call up the panel, and our hope is that as they're sharing their stories and their journeys, you get encouraged to get connected. If you've been far off and you've been isolating yourself from community, that you would come back running into community to grow in your relationship with Jesus. I'm going to call up my four friends. Please welcome them. It's so cold here. I'm going to move this forward. So these are four of our family members. We're Pris and Dea and Sergio and Frankie here, incredible people. They're all not just connected here, but they're also all serving. And um, I want to start with you. It's cold again, right? We're sitting a little bit more to the back. Um, Pris, if you could just share like, so you're on the surf team with me, right? And she's very young. How old are you, Pris? Uh, 20. She's 20. And she is serving in a capacity that is crazy. So you want to know what, she want, what she's doing? Connect with her later and listen to her story. But you're so young. And I know you were in a season not too long ago where you were totally on your own. So you're probably 19 at that time. Your whole family was all over the world. And you were all by yourself. And this is, isn't even your country. And um, could you share how staying connected during that season where you were all on your own, how were you still able to thrive um, in, in your faith? And how were you growing in that season? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Priscilla. Um, uh, just like Ibudevi shared, I do serve in the surf team. I also serve in other ministries such as youth and production. Um, and just like Ibude, we said, I am not from Indonesia, I'm from South America. So it's very, very far away from here. <laughs> um, and in the past couple years, maybe the past year and a half, uh, both my siblings grew up, got married, and left me. Um, and while they left me and got married and you know, started their life, uh, my mom went away also to both my country for a while and Netherlands where my sister is to be at their weddings and attend to some family situations that were happening. Um, and it was all a very sudden thing. It was overnight and the plan was for her to be gone for three months. Turns out it was nine months. So I was here fully alone for nine months with I'm going to say no preparation, but that's a lie. Jesus prepared me because so many trials happen. And it was really by God's grace that I was able to push through with it. But I think to answer your question, it really was just intentionality. Um, I'm the type of person that I will not sit for five hours and talk with you. I love my me time. So when I knew that I was going to stay alone, I was like, yes. I'm going to be alone. I'm going to have quality time with myself every day. Um, and I was really happy about it. But I think after a while and things started happening, of course, um, I started feeling lost. I started feeling like everything was against me. I didn't know what to do, whether it was financially, as I was handling all of that by myself, in the house and everything, or whether it was with relationships, even with serving. I felt like, am I just taking on too much? Am I doing, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where my life was going. Honestly, I still don't, only Jesus knows. But the point is, during that time as I was serving, I was very intentional because I started it off mostly serving online, um, especially like admin stuff and a lot of Zoom meetings. Um, but it really was my leaders in both the LITS and TC Youth Ministries encouraging me to come, especially be offline, right? 
And it was really great because as I was serving and being intentional to actually come and be here with the people, I got to just connect. I got community, I got friends who uh, were not necessarily going through the same thing, but had the same purpose and calling in their lives from God. So I could feel some sort of purpose. I could feel less alone. I could feel like, you know what? I have people who can pray for me. I have people who may not know what I'm going through, but they are still in this mm -hmm. spiritual battle with me. Um, and that was just what really got me through and that's really how I grew. And it was just conversations of, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And my friends and I laugh and we're like, <laughs> none of us do and it's okay. Um, and it was just really being intentional about finding community because it's not only just staying at home and sulking, which I did do a lot. Being honest, being one of all, I did do it a lot. But it was also coming here, even as serving in the back in the lights. Like, I know you guys all feel it when we all worship together. And it was just me in the back watching everybody. And I didn't feel alone in my journey of mm -hmm. faith. I didn't feel alone worshiping. I could hear everybody else worshiping and realizing God is working in so many lives. He's also going to be working in mine. And it was a lot of tears. Everybody who was there in the production team knows it. Um, but yeah, I think it was just intentionality about getting out of my house, getting out of that old routine of just, okay, I'm going to pray alone. I'm going to worship alone. I'm going to write a journal and that's it. it. It was really just being intentional about connecting with people and being vulnerable, which is not yeah. something that's easy, but it's something that's very necessary, yeah. especially when you're alone, how I was. Yeah. Um, thanks for sharing, Chris. And, and you know, yeah, let's clap for for her being so vulnerable in sharing this and having the courage to do this. I know you're a bit nervous, right? <laughs> it's, it's good to be people. nervous. It's a lot of people. But you know, Pris, what, what I love about your story is that just when you thought, you know, man, I'm going to have all this time to myself, God came in there and grew you by changing your perspective how much you need community, right? You were thinking, I have all this time, I can do my me thing, and not too long that God kind of made you realize how important community is. It is only when you were intentional of coming back to community and getting plucked in offline, not just being online, that you kind of understood and grew um, and also went through a process of being able to share what you're going through personally and open up and be vulnerable and, and find healing in, in, in community, right? And, and just knowing that you're not alone and and you don't have to face this alone, and it's not good to be alone because God did not create us, for, create us to be alone, but he created us for community. And so that's really beautiful how God has such a sense of humor and say, yeah, you just think you have your own time, I'm gonna change your perspective. Yeah. And that's beautiful about your faith journey, so thank you for sharing that. Um, yet I wanna talk to Dea a little bit. So Dea and I are in the same connect group. She's an amazing woman, like she knows everything about me and I, I know everything about her. That's what happens in community when we're that close in the connect group. Um, and there, you and I have cried together, right, at times, but you're an amazing woman and could you just share a little bit of your faith journey and you know how you first got connected to TC and um, how you have just grown in, in, in your faith and perspective of, of what a church is and who God is. Hi all, my name is Dea, uh, and forgive my broken English, I'm 100% Indonesia. So um, yeah, uh, I don't have many experience in church. When I first speak, uh, I, I was a Christian ever since I was born. Just We call it Christian KTP, but I really received Jesus when I was 30 years old. After I received Jesus, then I met a body of Christ, my previous church. That's the only church I know. So, but it uh, happened to be that they were, um, they chose to be legalistic. I was from a legalistic church, but I thought that's church. Um, I was wounded. I'm not gonna tell you the, uh, the details, but um, my season was ended there and I met TC. So I joined TC with a heavy bag of bitterness. I had bitterness towards church. I have a distrust towards church people, pastors, leaders, like allergy, gitu, and then um, I have, yeah, a disappointed, um, all those negative things. 
but at the same time I love Jesus and I know um, church is very important so I came to TC with all the, these negative things um, at first I want to know who are these people so I decided to join CG but that was what happened at the back of my mind I want to know these people I want to know what they believe I don't want to be um, like trapped or fall in the same uh, community like before so I joined CG and what what I found was I found a new family and my sister sitting there and we share lives together we cry together and it's something new to me yeah. I met a leader but they are human they also have the struggles they share their life their stories testimonies they all they inspire me and my story also inspired them I accept love and then I love them and I think that's uh, God start to bring healing to me through that relationships like to you and Eliza every time I have something I will call you know sis and then we cry but at the end we will pray together there's this power when yeah. we share our stories and then we pray together and I don't know something happened and then at the same time one of my CG family said okay uh, she was very busy they I need your help to uh, print uh, certificates at that moment I really like okay I don't want to do church it's <laughs> enough I don't want to do too much it's like lebay lah. I just want to come and then I just want to go home fast that's it I just want to help a bit but then I want to help my sister so snappy it's become my first ministry in congregational <laughs> services <laughs> congregational services is a ministry for baptism we help the congregation to be baptized, uh, marriage, and then child dedication. So they, they need certificates for that. So I do the certificate, uh, print the certificates, and I have to meet the pastors. Now, I found out that I have a trauma toward pastor, maybe a phobia because, you know, I'm, I, I'm an ambonist. We, we, are, we are really bold, you know. I'm not get scared easily. But with pastors, somehow, before I met them, I feel tremble, stomachache, Maybe there's a term in psychology, I don't know. But I feel like, oh, uneasy. But I know God used that for me to make a relationship with pastors here. So every time I want to ask for a signature, like, oh, could you please, like, exit. And then they will do, oh, oh OK, what happened? And then they will do the signature. I was so afraid that they will um, read my mind or, you know, I thought pastors, like, from other, like, planet called holy like they can read my mind they know everything about me I was so afraid but that's that's really what's happening I didn't laugh at that time but now I laugh but then I start to get to know my pastor and experience them and knowing that wow well, pastors are human all of us are human you know yes. none of us are perfect there's no perfect church yes and God start to reveal to me bring new perspective as I joined the ministry, as I walk with my CG family, um, God brings healing. And I did not explain, uh, I did not mention that God helped me to forgive wow. my previous church, which is not easy. So um, I don't know how God does that. It's just amazing. Now I can start, to, I can release forgiveness, new perspective about my fellow Christians my pastors about the church that I don't have to worry God is in control no matter how legalistic no matter whatever the church God is in control yeah I'm here so God is doing his uh, work so yeah that's what happened so now um, this community is not just a community I share life together um, like for example I'm not a very disciplined person so I join with people who are disciplined <laughs> like Bible start uh, like reading of the Bible you know, I never read the Bible one Bible like never but um, this group community that reads the Bible they encourage me to read the Bible every day and so another group now we have this walking together so now I want to join that because I'm not a very disciplined person so this community becomes like a daily like um, it's everything for me yeah praying prayer ministry now I joined the prayer ministry. Um, yeah, so it's just amazing. Yeah, it's so beautiful, Dea, that you're sharing it. And by the way, Dea, you know, she's not anymore running the snap because she's now managing congregational services. 
And, and, and this just shows there, right, that how God grows us through our insecurities, through our critical thinking and, and our bitterness and our hurt and our traumas that, that I love what you said in the earlier service that even though you had that trauma from the previous church, but that you knew that Jesus was real and that you were seeking him and you just wanted to know him. And God just revealed himself to you who he is through community and doing life in community and for you to be vulnerable enough to, to say, who are these people? What is this church about? And your story is just so beautiful that, you know, as you were seeking to know God more, that you not just found him, but that you found a whole new family to journey with you in your faith and that you found healing in that journey. You know, that God has set you free from fear of pastors and that you realize pastors are human beings just like us. And I love what you said, that there is no perfect person. There's no perfect pastor. There's no perfect church. If we think we're perfect, then we're the problem. Uh, because, you know, and, and some of us, I need to maybe say this. I didn't say this in the earlier uh, services. But sometimes we come in with such a critical mindset about how the church should be that we're not realizing we are the problem because we think we're so perfect and we know better than everybody else. So I hope God heals us from that arrogance, spiritual arrogance, yeah, and that we would be humble to, to understand that none of us is perfect and Jesus alone is perfect, yeah. So wanna thank you for sharing, Dea. You're amazing. If you wanna know more about the congregational ministry, please get connected with her after the service. And I'm gonna turn over here to the two gentlemen. Um, Sergio and Frankie. Uh, Sergio, your story is beautiful. Um, how you found this church. I mean, maybe you just share how, you, how you're connected right now in the church, how you're serving in this church, but also um, share a little bit of your personal story of how um, you have just grown in, in being connected in this church. Thank you, Budewi. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sergio, um, I'm serving in the young ministry right now and also helping out in uh, the Man Up ministry. Um, I'm currently also uh, plugged into a connect group, uh, it's called Transform CG, CG Transform. And I um, just want to say that uh, over the past couple years, uh, especially uh, being plugged into a community and uh, just uh, being able to share my journey, it's really um, uh, healing and also uh, helps me to be able to hang on to my faith uh, because uh, last year uh, it was uh, quite a struggle, quite a challenge for me and my family where we lost a loved one. Uh, my dad passed away and uh, following that uh, there were a series of uh, just financial struggles also and uh, being in a community, uh, in a small group, uh, really helps me to be able to push through uh, those uh, struggles, those days where I just felt uh, like so defeated and just mm -hmm. wanted to um, give up and, and run away from uh, the realities and the responsibilities. Uh, but those uh, bunch of people in my connect group, they, they speak life into me and they uh, prayed for me, they support me, which, which uh, ultimately helps me to, you know, just be able to uh, go through another day uh, yeah. and have a different perspective. And I think uh, we do a lot of things in our Connect group. Uh, we have hangouts. We, we don't just uh, read the Bible or talk about Jesus, but, but we do that a lot. But we also have uh, Spotify playlists that, that we collab together, uh, and I think that helps a lot because there were some songs that speak into me mm -hmm. during some of those hardest days. Uh, I think that's really good, and I'm really grateful for, uh, for my CG. Uh, and in the young ministry, I think it also has helped me uh, to be able to shift my focus, not on just uh, the problems that I'm facing, uh, but to be able to see what God is doing uh, with the kids, with the next generation, uh, gives me perspective of that my problems is, isn't really that big compared to what he is doing. Um, and for the Man Up ministry, I think it also opens up a lot of uh, 
relationship, new relationships. Uh, I think there's a lot of amazing uh, men here in the uh, TC community. Uh, and yes, you can clap for that. And um, just connecting with them and uh, hearing about their story and uh, how some of them has also passed, uh, uh, went through some similar mm -hmm. uh, experience as me. It really gives me hope and uh, just that uh, perspective of if God has done it for them, he can surely also do it for me mm -hmm. in my life. And that helped me push through uh, a lot of days that, uh, yeah, that are hard. Um, and uh, I think just as Christians or as people in general in this, in this world, we will uh, face troubles and uh, a crisis. And um, even Jesus promised us that, right? Uh, and we are either in a crisis right now, going out of one, or we are maybe heading into one that we don't even know. And I can't stress it enough uh, how important it is to be able to have a community that can speak truth and speak life, pray and support for you uh, during those hard seasons. Uh, because I think that can make the difference of you uh, just being able to push through uh, those hard seasons. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, I have a, a passage that I want to read. It's from Ecclesiastes 4, uh, from 9 till 10. It says that two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Uh, and if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. And I think this really speaks to me, and I could really feel it in my life how just having people around uh, during those hard times helped me to to uh, be able to go through those uh, days. Yeah. Yes, and also shout out for the caring council. Uh, if you guys went through like grieving, uh, you lost a loved one. Uh, there's the caring council team. Sorry, uh, is having uh, the uh, grief workshop. It's starting. 30th January, and you guys can uh, contact her outside, or yeah, yeah. I think that's all. Oh, great. Sergio, I mean, you have grown tremendously just since you started being part of this church, and you know, what I love about your story, Sergio, is that you're so vulnerable, and that, that you know, you, that God has shown you that in community, and by journeying with, with other people, and allowing the open up to other people, that these people are actually God sent for you to get you from one day to the next, right? Because grieving, that's not, that's something that's so hard, right? I think when we're grieving, it's really hard just to go from one day to the next day or sometimes even from one moment to the next. But how God has shown you that community is just his gift for us as a church so that we don't have to grieve on our own and we have others who are grieving with us and journeying with us. And what, what I also love about your story is that even though you're still facing hardships, I know your problems financially are not yet over and you're still struggling with that, um, that, that you are stepping up to serve. You know, that you're not just drowning in your own problem and in your situation, but that you are going beyond being connected and that you want to give something uh, to community and that you're serving the young kids, which is incredible that they have like an older uh, kaka, I would say, maybe, you know, koko or brother to look up to and, and for you to pour love into this next generation. And I love that about, about you and your, your heart that um, you're not just receiving from community, but you're so blessed and you realize it's, it's such a gift from God that you want to give back and love God and other people in that way. So thanks for sharing, Sergio, amazing. And last but not least, our friend Frankie. Frankie does a lot in this church. He's connected in multiple ways, but I'm just going to let you share, Frankie. But also, I know you're connected online, but also offline, because I know Bibi Man, you are in uh, the same connected. Devo Man, right? A Devo, Devo, men's Devo group, right? So could you share also a little bit of your story and what you do and how you're connected, but also how... What's the difference between being connected online and offline? And just talk a little bit more about that. Hello. <laughs> My name is uh, Frankie. Yes, uh, I joined uh, Kapal CG uh, 
uh, there's one uh, offline and online. Uh, let me share the offline first. Uh, every Thursday night, uh, we have a mixed CG. Uh, we call it a dream CG. The leader is a great cook. So every Thursday night, uh, it's not a diet uh, night for us. <laughs> And uh, the, the, the age is like, uh, it's a mix, it's a mix also. Uh, so we have, uh, we call it a classic person. <laughs> yeah, who, who, uh, person who experience, you know, uh, chasing kites while we are kids, losing kite, you know. And then uh, people who chasing Pokemon. I know. So we have we have all that. Uh, it's a, uh, but uh, beside that, uh, we learn a lot, uh, especially uh, Bible, you know. And then we share about uh, the young age uh, struggle, the the old, the classic people struggles, you know. Yeah, we share we share uh, all our lives, and uh, the the good thing is. Uh, about uh, offline, you know, the, the physical uh, meeting, we had, uh, we had a great uh, retreat a uh, couple, three months ago, and then uh, it, it, was, it was great. And then for the online, uh, the one with uh, your husband, so it's a men's default. Uh, the first time I joined, I thought, this, oh, it's gonna be a, a, a great man. <laughs> They're not the same, <laughs> you know, as, as messed up as I am, you know. <laughs> so we have a same struggle, we have a same, you know, uh, 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 yeah, victories. Problems. Or we, problems? we have same, uh, same problems, uh, but uh, we strengthen each other, you know, we pray together, and uh, uh, the good thing is uh, we can cry together. Mm -hmm. So, like Sergio said, uh, man up. No, we cry together. <laughs> the, the, that's, that's a good thing. That, that's, a, that's a good thing, you know, that uh, we can open up. We can, we can open up as a man. So, uh, yeah, I suggest uh, people here or online uh, who are still, yeah, I mean like online right now, uh, Please find a connect group, uh, a community. I also uh, manage uh, TC Golf. So people who you know golf, and then uh, uh, we have we have a community here. You know, same like like life. G golf is hard, right? Same as life, you know, uh, it's, it's hard, but uh, if you enjoy it, then it's going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's uh, from me. So uh, find uh, someone if you want to get connected, you know, as uh, us here or someone that uh, in front, you know, with the yellow jacket or in the uh, boot. Yeah, we can, yeah, you guys uh, shoot us and then shoot join a community. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Frankie. So, it's so incredible that, that, you know, it's easy, we were saying this earlier, right, that for women when they get together to open up and be vulnerable and share their stories and we can just sit for hours and just open up. But I love that the men in this community get to do that as well. Because the world always teaches that men have to be these creatures that do not cry and do not get vulnerable and that you're supposed to be strong. But I love that you are sharing and Sergio as well, that you get real. You know, you don't have to. I mean, you can be well built and you can do whatever it takes to look good outside, but you're still a human being on the inside with emotions, right? And I think being vulnerable and understanding that it's okay as a man to be vulnerable and open up and share your stories um, and be there for each other and journey together and pray over each other, it's a beautiful thing because that's how we 
how we receive healing, right? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Also, we keep our confidentiality yes. very much. You know, so That's important. <laughs> so it's just, you know, don't, don't worry. Whatever, whatever happened in Vegas, stay in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> That's the... That's how it should be, though. Yeah. In every CG, by the way, every right? CG. In every CG. And uh, what I love also is that you're leading TC Golf. And what a fun way, you know, that we as a community here and as a family not only get to go pray for each other and be in the Word of God together and grow spiritually, but that we get to have fun together. And that spiritual growth can also happen as we share our lives together on the golf course or whether we're playing basketball together or whether we are... Tennis, playing tennis together. What else do we have? Sorry, ping pong and futsal, Wednesdays. I mean, there's so many ways to connect. It's not just um, the spiritual growth, but it's also the fun aspect and just doing this together as a community and coming together and, and doing life together and being there for each other. So let's just give all our panelists, another big applause for being so honest and vulnerable in sharing. And if you want to know more about what's going on, you could get connected with these four incredible people and, and ask a little bit more about what's going on. But yeah, we're going to dismiss our panelists and I'm just going to sum, summarize everything up. So um, every story that you heard is a bit different. Right, Dea came from a background where she was very critical about church because she had such a bad trauma from the previous church she was in. And maybe you're here today and you are coming with a very critical mind as well because you've been hurt in church and church hasn't loved you and served you in a way that they should have. Maybe you're here and you're very lonely very similar to what Pris was sharing. Maybe you're, you're, you've been desiring to get married. I know there's a lot of young women here in their late 20s, 30s who want to get married, but you're, it's just not happening. And you're wondering, is this ever going to happen? I feel so lonely. I want a family. Maybe you are like what Sergio was saying, maybe you are going through a loss. Maybe you lost somebody you loved. And it's just so hard. And sometimes you wake up and you feel like you don't want to be alive because it hurts so much losing the person you love. Or maybe you're going through a marriage problem where you are married, but your marriage is just not flourishing. Maybe you are having problems in your marriage and sometimes you wake up one, at, on different days and you're saying, I should maybe just check out of this marriage and give up altogether. And God sees you today and God is here today and he wants to remind us that you have a family here that we're a family and that whatever you're going through, you're not supposed to go through it alone. You have all of us to journey with you. And it's okay, that's what we always say here in TC, it's okay not to be okay and to say, hey, I don't have it all together. I'm, I am lonely. I am afraid will I ever get married. I'm really hurting. We don't need to come to church and, and pretend that we have it all together. It's good to humble ourselves and say, I need other people in my life. And God wants to remind us today, He's given us to one another. This is what beautiful life is. It's not always easy, but God has given us to each other, to one another. And it is when we get connected with each other, not just on a Sunday, because we're going to church on Sunday, but when we get to open up like all our panelists have shared and where we can cry and be honest and, and, and you know, sampai ingos keluar, like that. Be vulnerable where we, we are just like, I don't care, but I need to speak what's in my heart. 
and allow community to come around you and say, you're not alone, we're here, and then to journey together. It's so beautiful, you don't want to miss out. So whoever you are here today, if you are feeling lonely and you are not connected, or you're going through something really hard, please know that we're your family, we care for you, we love you. We also have a care and counsel team. You know, maybe you're struggling financially, Maybe you're struggling with your, with your job. Whatever it is, marriage. We have so many incredible people here that want to just be here and listen to you and pass you the tissue and say, I'm here, I'm listening, and hold you and pray over you. This is what family does. And how privileged are we that we have each other? It's a gift from God. I'm so glad God put Janae in my heart and that she's in my life and I'm sure she feels the same way. I'm so glad I get to journey with Dea and with, with Elisa because they're in my connect group and we have cried tears together. My friend Viola, when we get together, magic happens. It's so deep, our friendship. I can't even explain it, but you don't want to miss out on this. Church is a family. God gave us to one another. And we love you so much, we don't want you to miss out. Not any single one of you. So if you're not connected, we really want to encourage you to get connected. Whatever it is, whether you just join a sports community because you're a really sporty person, whether you just want to talk to somebody and connect the care and counsel team, whether you just want to be in a smaller group so you have other people to journey with and come around your life during the week, whatever it is, we are here to serve you and love you and journey with you. And we hope that you would do the same with us. And so we just want to pray together as a church that God would grow us together as a community in loving and serving one another more. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, we're so grateful for your life. We're so grateful for who you are, that you died for us and gave yourself for us. And that through that, Lord, we can have intimacy with you in the Father, but also that you have shown us that this is the way we get to love on one another. Where we become selfless people and where the focus is not on only on what's happening in our lives, but that we would also focus on what is happening in other people's life and that as we are connecting, we find healing, others find healing. We get to minister to people, but we're also ministered to. And this beautiful thing of relationships and deep friendship happens, God. This is what we want, Father. We want to grow as a family. We want to grow in friendship. And I just want to pray for everybody here that is part of this family that is going through a really difficult time in this season of their lives. Lord, in the beginning of this year, would you just manifest who you are to them? in a very real and personal way, Lord. May they come to know you for who you are. May their hearts long to know you and seek you and find you in all your beauty and splendor, Lord Jesus. And as they do, that they would want to seek to be in community and grow together in knowing you grow together in loving one another like you call us to and to find our place to serve in this community because we all have something to give Lord and so we just want to thank you for this gift of your church that we are a family and that you are not just our head but that you are the bridegroom and we get to be your bride Jesus and Lord we know your heart is to make us so beautiful as a church where we are loving and serving one another in such a beautiful and authentic and real way like you showed us to that you can through us as a church make your presence known in the world that when people see what we have and the relationships we have and the way we love one another and serve one another that they want to be part of this family and find you, Lord, and come to know who you are. 
through community and that we would together as a church also grow more and more in our knowledge of you that you would continue to grow us this year spiritually lord and becoming more like you and that we would truly like you love one another and serve one another and minister to one another in your love and in the power of your spirit this is our heart god for anyone who needs healing, we pray for your healing to flow even in this moment, Lord. Thank you, God. Bring us together. Bring us closer together as a family. This is our prayer, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday! Surrender! Show me love!